so here we are today looking at the Solax monitoring system and uh, hopefully this little video will help you get a better understanding of the Solax monitoring system and it, it's, as, you find, as you will find it's quite comprehensive there's a lot of information here it's just uh, working out how to actually read it and make sense of it so here we have a number of tabs across the top we'll have a start with the overview and so we've got the power output of the system right now the yield today so that's how much power the system produced since it started up this morning monthly yield obviously pretty self-explanatory yearly yield and total yield since the system was installed now the main thing we want to get into here is this graph it's got a lot of information on here and it can be a little bit overwhelming and and, and hard to understand as well so let's have a look at it and see if we can make sense of it so this is a 24 hour period so it starts at midnight it ends at midnight and we've got a the uh, legend down the side here so it goes up to 6000 watts and it goes to a minus 4000 watts in this case we've got orange color on the graph is output power green is solar power and blue is feed-in power so if we start off just having a look here what's this time so it's 140 a.m and we see that the the Solax inverter is actually outputting 302 watts. Obviously, at that time at night, zero of that uh, power is coming from the solar, and we've got feed-in power of minus 47. Now, what this means, the, the whole minus 47, that means that 47 watts is coming from the grid. 302 watts is coming from the battery through the Solax hybrid inverter in this case. And obviously zero watts coming from the uh, solar power now how these systems work these are these are systems which are designed with a hybrid inverter to maximize self-consumption because you don't want to be uh, producing your solar power during the day and not really using it and so it ends up being a lot of surplus power going back to the grid and at a rate which isn't very very good for you it might be six cents, it might be ten cents, but when you're buying power at about twenty-eight cents a kilowatt hour, you're much better off at storing it so you can uh, use it at night time, or when the when the sun's not out, and to power your home, and, and yes, that can be saving you twenty-eight cents a kilowatt hour, rather than just a measly six or ten cents a kilowatt hour on a solar feeding tariff. So, as I said, it's it's trying to maximise the self-consumption. So the inverter is always trying to monitor the power consumption in the property to see how much power is being used okay we'll, we'll try and match that with the battery or with the solar power and in this case it's seen okay the house is using about 306 watts so it's putting that out of the battery but it wasn't quite correct there was 46 watts that had to take from the grid as well so in this case the house was using just what's what's that 300 and uh, 362 watts so 306 of that watts came from the solar well from the solar inverter the solax hybrid inverter and 46 watts came from the grid if we keep going along here you see it, it keeps on changing the the power that you consume in a property is constantly fluctuating you've got fridges and turning off and on going through different cycles obviously you've got lights and things like that coming off and on and just different things going through different cycles in the house so using different amounts of powers but you can see overnight when everyone's asleep the power consumed is it's pretty constant what is it it's from sort of it's around the 300 watts mark 200 to 300 watts mark and we see we get to this stage here what's the, what's the time 6:50 in the morning and we see the power output of the hybrid inverter is actually zero watts and now this is because the battery is actually discharged so it doesn't have any more power and so it's actually having to take some power from the grid at this stage it says feed in power minus 359 so that means 359 watts has been taken from the grid and you can see this time in the morning the solar's just started kicking in as well we've got 99 watts coming from the solar if we go along a little bit further so this is right on breakfast time here seven o'clock and we see that the feed in power has actually dropped right down to minus 2467 watts 
the battery's got a tiny bit of power now, so it's putting a tiny bit of power in. The solar power is putting 132 watts before, but, uh, towards it. Oh, it's just refreshed on us. As it likes to do, I'll go back to where I was. There we go. So we've got 2,467 watts coming from the grid. So that's right on breakfast time. I'd say a kettle went on or a toaster, something like that, which uses quite a lot of power for a short period of time. And so the battery and the solar didn't have enough power to cover that because the battery was flat or very close to it. It could only put 55 watts towards it. So most of that power came from the grid. And as we go along, we'll see we've got the solar power line going right up and if we I might just go up to here let's see here so here we see the solar power system at this time of the day is producing 3163 watts of power the output power of the system is 544 watts and feeding power is 76 watts so this tells us here that the house is actually consuming 544 watts the solar power system has had 676 watts of surplus power but we've also we've got the difference between the 3163 and the 544 and oh, uh, plus a 76 so that difference there is actually power going into the battery so that's power which is uh, produced on site and it's been stored in the battery. So the battery is charging pretty heavily right now. Three kilowatts going into the battery. Well, sorry, not three kilowatts, but the, the 3,000, in this case, 3,200 minus the, uh, what's that, 777. So 3,222 watts is going into the battery minus 777 watts right at this moment. If we go up a little bit further, you see the blue feeding power line actually jumps right up. And that's because the battery at this stage is pretty much full. So we're, in this case, we've got a 4.64 kilowatt system. It's connected to a, uh, a 6.5 kilowatt LG chem low voltage battery. And so on a beautiful day like this, by... Uh, 20 past 10 the battery is getting very close to fully charged and as the battery is getting very fully uh, is getting fully charged we've actually got the feed in power going right up that means the battery hasn't required the power anymore it's saying hey I'm, I'm pretty much full I don't require this bulk amount of power anymore and so it sees that okay well we don't need it we don't need that consumption in the house so we're going to feed it into the grid. It's surplus power, which isn't required by the house. It's not required by the battery. So it's going back as surplus to the grid. So that's what's going on there. And we just go through here. Interesting, just if we get back to, back to this moment here. We've got, we're right on lunchtime now, so midday. And what would have happened here is some cooking elements started getting used inside the house. And so we've got the output power of the system, 4,197 watts at this moment. So the, the Solax hybrid inverter is providing 4,197 watts to the house at this stage. It's, it's feeding all that power in the house. It's seeing a, a, a quite a large load. It would be heating elements coming on. And so it's trying to pump all the power into that. So power's coming from the solar. 3,869 watts from the solar. And the remainder from the battery. And you can see there, minus 25 from the grid. So 25 watts is coming from the grid. The, the vast majority is coming from the solar. And we keep on going. That that's happens for a, a little while here. We see from midday till pretty much 12.40 where we're in this, uh, this situation so here we have the solar power system producing 3928 watts the uh, output power 2576 and the feeding power 2085 watts so it's going back to the, the loads just dropped down now in the house 
And so the and the battery is actually charged again by the looks of that. Oh no, it, it, we're sorry, we're still putting some charge into the battery as well now. So the battery has just been used at this lunchtime period. The battery has just been used at this lunchtime period, and so it's recharging now, getting up to full again. And then we can see the the feed in power and the output power converge again, and that's where the the uh, consumption in the house and the solar production of a very sorry the so let, it's always a little bit confusing these graphs it's trying to trying to work out how to explain them all but this is where the the power being fed into the grid matches very close to the solar power and, and the output power in the house means there's not much power being used in the house at all but the solar is producing quite a lot of power, so 3,000 watts is going back to the grid at this stage. So 700 watts is still being used in the house and to charge a battery, complete charge of the battery. And you can see the lines here with the green, orange and blue. They're all very, very close. So in this case, it means that there's very little load inside the house at this stage. So most of the power is going back as surplus. First off, it's covering the consumption inside the house, but then most of the power, the bulk of it at this time, is going back to the grid. 2,000 watts, 2,384 watts is going back as surplus at this stage. Then we come off into the night time again. We see the green solar line dropping, dropping, dropping. 153, 143 watts, but the output power's up there. So that means we're going back to the battery and the, the Solax hybrid inverter is powering the place by the battery again. And that's going on all through the night, all into the evening. You can see solar power is now zero. Output power of the system is seen there going around the 300 watts mark. Now with this whole system, you can, you can uh, go through the dates so you can check different days and what happened on different days quite easily here you can see once again we've got lunchtime all the power being used with elements again so the system is outputting 4200 watts of power three and a half kilowatts coming from the solar the other uh, bit of power coming from the batteries and it goes through all the way along actually this is this is a good one because you can see the battery actually ran out of power it was totally discharged at what's this time 145 in the morning so 460 watts was having coming having to come from the grid again you see the output powers drop down to zero 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 and we're taking the power from the grid until the sun comes out again and the battery starts charging again into the day so that's bit of an overview there we'll we'll just uh, actually we'll have a look over here we've, we've got the system site uh, system, the site information so information about the size of the system the data was actually commissioned the uh, from the power outputted by the system the equivalent of trees planted carbon off offset carbon dioxide and income from the system if we go down a bit further we've got the yield of the system we can go to month few it's a bit more it makes a bit more sense so this shows from the beginning of the month how much of the power has been directly self-consumed in the property and in the little green section is there is surplus which has gone back to the grid so you can see on this day 21.5 kilowatt hours was used on site so that gives you a bit of an idea there you can go to the year view and see it over over the months as well obviously this hat system hasn't been in for too long so there's not a great deal of history there at this stage now if we go up we can go to this next tab here real-time display real-time display is always a good one to look at because it shows you where power is going at the moment so we can see the solar is producing 2286 watts at the moment we've got power 1853 watts going to the grid as surplus so it's not required it means the battery is pretty much fully charged and so we're not having any solar going from the 
the solar power to the battery because the battery is already fully charged the battery is actually providing 13 watts towards the house as well at the moment and the house is actually consuming 355 watts of power right now so obviously this uh, changes all throughout the day so first thing in the morning there will be nothing uh, coming from uh, coming or going from the grid it will be going from the solar to the house and the solar to the battery charging that battery back up when we come to night time we would have zero watts from the solar and it'll all be going from the battery into the house and if the battery totally discharges then the battery will stop producing providing power and the power will start coming from the grid until the next day when the sun comes out again so we go to batteries this is an interesting one as well this shows us the current state of charge of the battery so 99 percent here and it gives us a bit of a graph of, of how the battery has, has been, the, the different electrical characteristics of what's been going on at different times of the day. So you can see this is once again from midnight. So at, uh, at midnight, what do we have? The battery is at 49% capacity at midnight and is producing 300, providing 389 watts there. And you can see that the capacity continues to drop 38, 33, 32. 23% capacity and 20% capacity it actually turns off and you, with these batteries you don't want to discharge them too deeply because if there's if there's a number of days when they aren't recharged it can possibly get to a, a, a depth of discharge of the battery where it actually goes into safety mode and and you need to get support to actually uh, get it reconnected and working and functioning again so that's why it stops at 20 percent and so you see zero watts is coming from the being provided from the battery at this stage and then we get the get to what we got 740 and some power starting to go back in the battery again 21 percent 24 percent and you can see it ramps up really quickly just been a, a small battery on a relatively large system and not much power being used in the property it doesn't take long at all to charge it so 25 percent what have we got 24 percent there at eight o'clock and by 10 18 it's at 92 percent and then it just slowly ramps off which is quite interesting to see just how it works there and you see just in the middle of the day we've had a bit of power being consumed when the the solar wasn't quite enough to to provide all the power so it's started taking power from the, the battery again. Two and a half kilowatts coming from the battery. You see the, the capacity of the battery just dropped drop down, 89%. And then the uh, the load in the house has, has disappeared again. And so the battery starts charging again. Up to 97, 98, 99% there. And it keeps on going through. Okay, what else we got here? We got the, so history record and alarm record. So obviously with the alarm record you can click on them and see if there's been any alarms with the system and what they mean report analysis obviously pretty straightforward you can uh, do some reports up on what the system is actually uh, the, the characteristics of how the system performed auto sending settings that's just putting in email addresses and things like that so if there is an alert or anything like that it can where that alert will be sent to and once again we have the we can choose a different day of the week here and see what it's done at different times so you can see see this the the curve here so from midnight dropping 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 getting pretty much flat then a little while, while later the sun started to come out and it's charging 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 fully charge fully charge fully charge and the sun starts going down again so it starts discharging the battery again discharge 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 so that's the the usual battery curve so look i hope that video has been helpful for you Hope that information has been helpful for you. And uh, so we're Gold Coast Solar Power Solutions. If you need a Solax monitoring system put in or a Solax hybrid inverter, Solax with battery, or just a solar power system in general, we can certainly help. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you.